Television, and we're here in Des Moines, Iowa, and we're here with our special guest, Professor Bobby Barangan. Professor Barangan, so good to see you again. Thank you, sir. Um, well, uh, first of all, I want to say since our last episode, uh, we got a lot of response re uh, regarding uh, your, your demonstrations and your interview. And we're back here once again, and we wanted to talk to you a little bit more about your career. Uh, again, today we would like to talk a little bit uh, specifically regarding, uh, last time we talked about your Campbell career and different influences. Um, today we'd like to talk to you a little bit about the Filipino martial arts, and uh, again, obviously being indigenous and Filipino. Um, first of all, how did you get involved in the Filipino martial arts? Usually, in the in the building when we were growing up, uh, sep, uh, some part of the barrio, some part of the in the provinces, they usually have a group of uh, the old guys just doing just harness. They usually do it in the field. And they don't have a club. They just usually they just go out in the field in the, in the farm areas and they just do the sticks. And uh, I just happened to be. Uh, just walking along, and then well, I heard the the doing sticks, and hear this click, 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 and, and so I thought, well, you know, I'd like to, you know, just curious at that age, uh, so I thought, well, I'll go and uh, to see what's going on. And uh, at that time, I, I didn't really know what particular system was was, was uh, well, they didn't have a particular system at that time. You know. uh, so we um, so I just kind of investigated, and uh, I kind of liked the. I uh, kind of like the sound, and it's just like I thought they were just doing dancing and, and with, with a stick. As a matter of fact, there is a, a Filipino folk dance that does the, uh, uh, the the two stick. I can't remember the name of that, but uh, it, it was uh, based on the folk dance. And uh, so I just kind of stood aside and got a twig, and, and I just start, you know, just imitating, mimicking what they were doing. And that was about it. Uh, I didn't really get into the into the uh, art at that time, or I didn't know if it, it was an art. But uh, we knew that there was a, it was part of the history. So I went back to the city, and uh, when we joined the uh, when I joined the uh, the karate club there, it's just a combat jiu-jitsu club. Uh, so we so we thought, well, what about the artists? What kind of what, 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 is, is that part of a martial arts that, uh, that they were teaching, uh, Sensei Mina? Um, well, he said that uh, he doesn't really have a particular system. And uh, so we start doing just the block, the basic block, basic strike. And his specialty is a reverse motion instead of the regular hatchet position. He had a, uh, an ice pick position because He's claiming that it's a it, it's a walking stick. So I don't know, and, and I've watched a lot of Satoichi film at that time at my age, and, and we kind of like this the idea of, of a reverse uh, reverse block and reverse strike. Uh, that kind of that's how I got involved at that at that age. Uh, I, I, I was about uh, 12 or 13, 15 years old when when we started the, the combat karate. Uh, it was included in our in our fourth day at that time, and when I came to the United States in '67, uh, pretty much done with the, the Kali. I didn't get into the the, the screener system here in the United States. I just uh, I just started the, the, the Okinawa tape for a while in Los Angeles, and then when I went into the service, uh, U.S. Army. I got involved in uh, the Black Eagle Karate Camp, uh, Kempo Karate in, in Germany, and uh, it, it's, it was only after I got back to the state after the service that we met Piki uh, Tinker's uh, assistant, uh, Grandmaster Leo Gahi in Minneapolis, and this is where I met uh, Shihan uh, Cardalos Reyes uh, from Minneapolis, and uh, also uh, uh, Tony Nobello Jr. from Minneapolis. Uh, and we start doing uh, uh, the Bali song, knife presentation, the knife slashing, cutting. And from the Piketty Thursday system, uh, we uh, invited uh, the Yukahe in the modern harness system. And we invited over to, to the house after the seminar. He stayed with us and, and uh, gave us a little bit more of the, what the system uh, that was all about. That was Professor Mary Priest's uh -huh. And that's about the, that's about the, uh, no, uh, 
I have, uh, then I went to uh, Daniel Lozano here in uh, Cedar, Rapids, Cedar, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and uh, we trained with him for a couple of days. Um, it was, uh, I pretty much added to the, added to the, to the protocol or the requirements of the, of the, uh, the school at this time, and uh, we just kept working at it. Excellent. So we, we still have a lot to work to do, uh, but at the same time, uh, I wanted to introduce the Filipino arts in this area. Uh, as far as I know, we are the only uh, streamador or um, uh, that teaches the arnis. There's another, I think there's another uh, black belt who, or there's another instructor who was part of our association at one time, his name is Jeff Mitchell. He's got uh, several training uh, hours with the Daniel Sano. Uh, but at that, at this time, we're the only one that's uh, teaching. Okay. Excellent. Now, in, um, for, for our general public, for our viewers, uh, there are many different, uh, we, we, I talked before with you earlier about the, uh, the, the different weaponry in the Filipino arsenal, the Armas, as it were, again, uh, for those of you who have seen um, the, uh, the, sometimes the Filipino shields, that have the, the various weaponry that's depicted upon them. Uh, what are some of the major types of, of weaponry taught in the Philippines for some of the different uh, blades and indigenous rods? As far as I recall, there is a, we use uh, Kampilan, uh, the, the Muslim Chris. Mostly, this is uh, indigenous to the, uh, the, the southern part of the Philippines. And uh, it, was, uh, it was said that the Barong was used to uh, decapitate the bad guys. Uh, this is what they use because of the white blade. Uh, it's got more power. Uh, it's, uh, it's much sturdier. Uh, the Tumpinan, Chris, the Baron. But in the cities, it was mostly the balisong that was uh, very prominent because it's, uh, it's like a consumed blade and it's small. And, you know, it's pretty much a lot of uh, the favorite weapon of the, uh, of the, the gang members and, and not really, uh, the club, certain clubs in the Philippines, this is, uh, this is, this is their favorite weapon. And uh, my dad uh, had a little bit of uh, training in the, in the balisong. And, uh, he's the one that I got my training from. And from then on, uh, when we met our, our sister school in Minneapolis, uh, Sihan uh, Tony Nabello Jr., he's another person that, uh, that works very well with the, with the Balasan. And I want to give uh, Sihan Carl de los Reyes with the, with the, with the knife fighting because uh, he likes the, uh, the Benton Webby a lot. Benton Nueve. It's got 29 inch altogether. It, and it's a Bali song. It's a Bali oh, I, I, I have seen of them and I didn't know I didn't know they had their own indigenous name. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's what we call the Benton Nueve. 29 inch song. So it's ah, not really a knife. Benton Nueve, of course, 29. Was, oh my gosh. Was, it's really not a, a knife, it's a sword. sword. It's a sword. Oh, no, sword. And uh, uh, Sheehan had shown the demonstrated uh, his proficiency with the with the Wow. Oh my gosh, yes. Well, that's fantastic. Now, again, you've already taken your Philippine arts and you've passed it along to your students. Yes. And uh, um, I've had the pleasure recently, there was recently a testing here at uh, Professor Barangan's uh, studio, and we got to see some of the people do some of the, the, the Kali, the Anis, that the that they have learned. And it, it's, like I said, it's very refreshing to see them do their, um, the techniques that we taught them, but also their own innovations as well. Um, how many people would you say presently in the curriculum are working on the Filipino arts? Well, it's uh, part of the requirements for uh, uh, for their green belt, blue belt at this school. Also, the Hawaiian Kempo uh, school uh, we have uh, implemented it to the Hawaiian Kempo in uh, Topeka, Kansas, and also uh, the White Coast Kempo in uh, Olathe, Kansas. Uh, this is part of their 
the requirement. This is uh, my job as the uh, founder and of the uh, Unified Kick of Variety Systems. Uh, this is what I brought to them. Uh, I do the seminars in, in stick fighting and knife fighting and make, uh, make, it, make sure that it's going to be included in your system. This is uh, another way of uh, uh, an added requirements for the black belt that's, that's going to be promoted. Uh, this is, uh, we, in their particular system, the Hawaiian people, they didn't have any, any, any weaponry as, uh, as far as the, uh, the basic weaponry, the Filipino weaponry, and this is where we, we included and made it part uh, for, their, for their next round. Excellent. So now, those that hasn't had the, uh, the, the privilege of having the knife fighting or the stick fighting, now they have it, and this is part of it. This is what I do, with it. this is what we do. We, we bring in the, uh, the Filipino arts and the schools. Very good. Well, let's go from the Filipino art to the, uh, the, the uh, Kempo aspects of the art. Um, let's talk a little bit about the United Kempo Karate Systems and uh, how that all came into being. And um, what is the what is this organization about? What is the UKKS? The UKKS Unified Kempo Karate System. It was developed to uh, enhance uh, and help uh, individuals, and, uh, students, and instructor mm -hmm. to add more uh, more training, add more technique, add more system to their particular style. Uh, in the system, we have. We have, of course, the uh, Alo Kempo, Hawaiian Kempo, uh, the White Horse Kempo. We also have a, a Wing Chun stylist uh, uh, from, a, from White Horse Kempo. His uh, Danny Mulane is also a, a Wing Chun stylist. So he's incorporating, uh, incorporating Wing Chun in, as a, in, and then in Kempo. Uh, so what we, we, we did was brought other instructors from from different Kempo discipline and exchange ideas. Uh, we even brought uh, Master Garcia from Kansas City. He's a uh, master in the uh, Hubi Pai system. Uh, from, from his expertise, we learned uh, a little bit more of grappling. We learned more uh, pressure point manipulation. So instead of just having a, a Kempo curriculum, now we can add grappling, we can add weaponry, we can add Chinese weaponry, uh, Okinawan weaponry. Uh, we also have Taekwondo stylists that cross grade into the uh, into the Kempo system. So now they're adding the kick and rep repertoire and helping the students that doesn't doesn't have that much skill. Some of the Kempo stylists that uh, in, the, in the old days there were still high kicks. In it's close to below the belt. Uh, so now, so now we got uh, we got all these instructors that uh, hire in, in Taekwondo. Now they're helping us with the, uh, doing high kicks and, and training. Uh, like I said, so far there's there's nine schools altogether, active schools in, in the Midwest, and our job the the Yudancha or the the reigning board will go do seminars in, in, in each state again to see uh, if everybody's uh, on the level, everybody's on the same page as far as uh, their training. Uh, we do our we do the testing, the promotion. Uh, if you have a black belt list or a brown belt on up, testing in your school. They have to have three members of the board of regents or three members that's from third degree, you know, fourth degree and up to be on the board. Uh, your own instructor cannot be on the board. Uh, so in that way, our credibility, their credibility will be no question. There's not, there's not, there's not going to be any question. So, and it's part of our bylaws that we have to be, we have to be, Graded by by the unified by, by the association members. Now, so we now again, this is all indigenous to, to basically the, the Midwest area, basically um, Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, Iowa, 
Nebraska, Ohio. Is there any areas? Kansas. 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 Is there? Well, is there a possibility for anyone outside the area, like yes, people watching our television program? We have, uh, we have, we, we have people in uh, Leesville, Louisiana. Uh, we used to have uh, affiliate school in uh, Sacramento. Uh, not Sacramento. I'm sorry, San Diego, uh, where my son was was stationed at. Uh, at this at this time, I think that as far as we we have. As far as we have. Excellent. Now, um, President, do you have a website or any or any internet presence in relationship to the studio or the association? Yes, sir. It's a Barangay Temple Martial Arts. Very good. Excellent. Well, again, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you once again. And uh, we're going to be back with more exciting action once again from Professor Bobby Barangan here on Martial Arts Today Television. Stay tuned.
that's okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Be Ernest, Ernest Demana uh, versus the knight, knight attack. So we're striking. If this, uh, if we miss, we still have that another strike. We have strike with that weapon. We strike with the pinch up. Excellent. 